Welcome back to the asylum. This is again Commander Asylum. Thank you for your patience for the past year and a half as I hasn't, haven't released any new videos. I've been pretty busy at work and my subscription to Adobe Premiere Pro lapsed. Um, so I've started using some free video editing software. We'll see how that works out. Please let me know if, uh, if you're okay with this. I don't have any intro credits because that was uh, integrated through Ad uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Uh, my intro to bounty hunting video, I talked about pit management. Pit management is extremely important to be able to effectively fly your ship. It's also one of the more advanced topics, unfortunately. Anyone who's tried to do the advanced combat tutorial knows that unless you do active pit management, you're going to get your butt kicked. So in this video, we're going to talk about pit management. One of the major components that you have in your ship is the power distributor. The power distributor takes power from your reactor and distributes it to your three major subsystems. Your three major subsystems are systems, engines, and weapons. Each of these major subsystems has its own capacitor bank. The capacitor banks feed the different things from that capacitor. So the weapons capacitor feeds my weapons. The engines capacitor feeds my engines. And the name for systems not the best. The systems capacitor really feeds your shields. It's really what that's going to feed. So as I shoot weapons, let's unload my weapons here. OK, as I shoot my weapons, you'll see that my weapons capacitor goes down. So one of the effects of the weapons capacitor is to keep my weapons cooled. The lower my, capac the lower my capacitor bank goes on the weapons, the more effect heat is going to have on my ship. So having power in the weapons helps keep my ship cool. It allows me to actually shoot my weapons as well. Right now I'm trying to shoot my plasma accelerators and as you can see they're not shooting. That's because my weapons capacitor is empty. To be able to re to, uh, to shoot my weapons again I'm going to have to put my pips over into weapons and we'll talk about pips and, and what they do and, and how to manage them here shortly. But as you can see my weapons capacitor is now recharging and I can shoot my weapons again. The engine capacitor allows me to boost my ship. So I'm going to boost my ship. Watch what happens to my engine capacitor. It's the capacitor bank that's in the middle. So you see, when I boost the ship, the capacitor bank goes down. I have a small capacitor bank here. So I have a quite small capacitor bank on this ship that allows me to only boost once until I actually put some recharge back into my capacitor bank. Uh, and last but not least, we have the system's capacitors. The system capacitor bank allows my shields to recharge. When my shields take damage, they will draw power from the system's capacitor to recharge the shields. When my shields go down, they will also draw power from the system's capacitor to help bring my shields back online. It will continue to do that, so if my shields go down, they'll be completely down. And my shields will draw power at the full rate from my system capacitors. As long as I keep power in that capacitor, then my shields will not come online until they get back to 50% power. When they get back to 50% power, then they will come back online. Um, if your shields go down, you want to make sure that you have sufficient pips in your system to make sure that your capacitor bank does not go empty. That will make sure that you are maximizing the recharge rate on your shields. The faster the recharge rate to your shields, the faster your shields will come back online when they go down. So let's talk about pips. You have six pips total on the ship. If you get teammates that join you on multi-crew, then they will each give you one extra pip. You don't get to control that pip. They get to control where that pip goes. But you can talk to them and tell them to put it where you want it. So the pips have the direct effect of recharging your capacitor. The more pips you have assigned to that capacitor, the faster it will recharge. So you're effectively controlling where the power from the reactor will go uh, into your ship's systems. There are other extra effects that the pips give you, though, and we'll talk about those now. So having extra pips in your weapons provides no other advantage other than recharging your weapons capacitor faster. If I am ready to unload all my weapons on my target and I want to minimize the heat generation on my ship and make sure I don't have to wait for my capacitor to recharge, then I'm going to sit here and make sure I have all pips 
to the weapon's capacitor, and that makes sure that I can shoot without stopping on my target. So let's talk about our engine capacitor. When I'm boosting, depending on the ship, the power distributor that you have in the ship, So depending on the power distributor that you have in your ship, the ship and the engines will determine how much capacitor is going to be taken up by boosting your ship. Some ships you can boost uh, infinitely, so the Crate Mark II. If you have engineered systems on your Crate Mark II, you can pretty much boost indefinitely with only two pips to engines. Uh, this ship here, with just this is the uh, Imperial Clipper, by the way. As you can see, this ship here with only two pips to engines, I cannot boost indefinitely. I have to wait now. So the engine capacitor also has another great effect. This is an extremely important thing to understand. So the more pips I have set to engine, the faster and more maneuverable my ship is. So if I have zero points in engines, I'm going to go to 50% throttle here, and we'll see that my ship does 148 meters per second. If I put one pip in the engine now, my speed's going to go up. Watch. And then another pip. And then another pip. And four pips. This also affects your max speed. So if I was going 100% throttle, I'm going to get the fastest uh, speed out of my ship with four pips and engines. Not only do I get more speed with pips and engine, I get more acceleration. So if I'm thrusting up, down, left, or right, or trying to start or stop my ship, that's going to happen faster with more pips and engine. So if you're trying to pull a tight turn to get on somebody's tail, you're going to want to put more pips and engines. Or if you're trying to boost indefinitely, you're going to want more pips and engines. So let's talk about the system capacitor now. So we talked about the shields requiring power from the system capacitor to recharge themselves. Both after they go, after they, uh, your shields drop, they have to recharge back to 50% to come back online, and that power will come from your system capacitor. And when they're just taking damage and need to recharge, even while they're still up, it will pull from your system capacitor. So if you don't have any pips to system, and you're taking damage in your shields, they're going to draw power from your system capacitor to recharge themselves. Once your system capacitor is empty, your shields will no longer regenerate. Having pips into sh the systems also gives you uh, an added benefit to your shields. Let's say I have 1,000 shields right now. Every pip I add to my shields makes them stronger. So if I have no pips in shields, if I have 1,000 base shields with no pips in system, then my shields will take exactly 1,000 damage before they go down. If I have four pips in systems, they will take 2.6 times as much damage to go down. So it's effectively a 2.6 uh, 2 times resistance to the damage you take. So with four pips in systems, I effectively have 2,600 shields. So this is extremely important. When you know you're going to take damage, you know you're going to take damage, quickly put all the pips into systems that will greatly lower the damage that you take. And then when you're no longer about to take damage, take your pips out of system and put it where they are needed. So there's some other nifty things you can do with uh, your ships to make managing your pips easier. Let's go ahead and stop my ship here. So some ships go shieldless. If you build a uh, armor tanking ship that doesn't use any shields but uses hull modules, and uh, so you have module reinforcements and hull reinforcements, so you're pretty much hull tanking your ship um, with no shields, there's no reason to have any pips into systems. So some fantastic ships to do this with are the Federal Assault Ship. The Federal Assault Ship, the uh, or FAS for short, is one of the best whole tank ships you can use in the game. By not fitting shields on the ship, you don't have to worry about putting any pips into the system because you don't have any shields. 
to, to drive off that capacitor. Additionally, it buys you extra module fitting space in your ship to add extra hull reinforcements or module reinforcements. Um, something else you can do, so if you look at my weapons that I have on this ship and right here, I have two multi-cannons and two plasma accelerators. Plasma accelerators are very power hungry. So I balance that with multi-cannons. Multi-cannons use almost no capacitor. Here, I'll take all pips out of weapons, and I'll start shooting my multi-cannons, and then we'll see what happens to my weapons capacitor. Got to reload. Watch how slow the weapons capacitor goes down when I'm shooting. Now compare that to one shot of my two plasma accelerators. I think I only shot one there. Let's go ahead and charge that back up. Okay, now let's try it again. There we go. So, by having a balance of power-hungry weapons and non-power-hungry weapons, I can have a nice balanced mix of, of, of not only damage types, because the multi-cannons are going to do kinetic damage, and the plasma accelerators are going to do a combination of thermal and absolute damage. Absolute damage ignores all shield resistances. So if someone has 100% shield resistances across the board, which is impossible, but let's hypothetically say they have 100% shield resistances, 50% of the damage the plasma accelerator is going to go through. So when I have a diverse mix of damage types like I do with this ship, it makes it harder for somebody to stack one particular resistance to counter this build that I have. In addition, when someone's in my sights, I can, um, since the multi-cannons don't pull a lot of power from the capacitor, I can maintain uh, DPS on my target for a longer period of time with fewer pips in weapons or drawing less power from the weapons capacitor. That allows me to focus usually more pips on engines which allows me to stay out of his line of fire, ideally stay on his tail and stay behind him. Or if I know I'm going to take damage I put it into systems, all four pips into sys. If you watch my small ship versus big ship video, you'll see that I make um, I make heavy use of putting all pips into systems because one blast from that Corvette can pretty much one shot the, the Imperial Imperial Eagle that I used for that that video. Um, however, with all four pips into systems, I can survive one of his plasma accelerator shots. So you can see it's very important. If you properly manage your pips, you should be able to pass the advanced combat tutorial. Um, by primarily, the most important thing is when you know you're going to take damage, put four pips into systems. If you do, if you have a lot of people attacking you, then it's generally best to keep four pips in the system to maximize your survivability until you have sufficient time to take down one or two of your enemies. Um, and lower that incoming damage and then you can kind of let off the four pips in the system and worry about maneuvering around the last few targets that remain. So I hope that answers your questions about pips. Uh, if you have any other questions please feel free to ask in the comments and thank you for your time and stay frosty.